My name is Jess Mosier, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how employee engagement supports supply chain integration and performance. But first, I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story of how I kind of ended up on the subject of employee engagement. So right after my undergrad, I actually moved out to Los Angeles after serving in AmeriCorps. And it's very different for somebody who's used to the, like, the clean, pristine um, New Hampshire air. It's smoggy and it's dirty. And um, that's kind of when I started thinking about sustainability in terms of environmental impact and the impact that we as humans have in our consumption on the environment. Unfortunately, after being there about a year and a half, I lost my job during the recession, so I had to kind of decide what to do next. So I came back to New Hampshire, of course. Everybody comes back to New England, right? So I came back to New Hampshire. I got a job as an associate demand planner at a local um, grocery, wholesale grocery distributor. And um, I kind of worked my way up from there. About two years in, I kind of started feeling like, you know, this is great, like the subject matter is interesting, but I'm not really sure if this is what I want to do long term. So I kind of just started, I don't know, I want to say like opening myself up to new possibilities. So then, not maybe six months after that, I had this really weird dream. Now my classmates have heard about this. I feel really silly talking about it. But <laughs> it was so, it was such a pivotal moment for me that I feel like it's really critical to share. So I was back in Los Angeles and the river, the LA River, which is notoriously very dirty, was overflowing with all these like economy size buckets of empty like laundry detergent. And everything that had ever been in the river was dead and it was overflowing with all these soap bubbles. And it sounds really silly. It was like one of those really weird 10 second intense dreams that you wake up and you're like, oh, that was, that was weird. Where'd that come from? Um, but it started me thinking about, you know, the company that I, I was working for and I'm still working for is shipping like thousands of cases of this stuff and we're ultimately dumping it into the water supply. So I started thinking, okay, I, I really want to get into sustainable sourcing. I want to look at how organizations can be more responsible with their, what they're purchasing and what they're selling. So I started Googling Green MBA, and because Google's super smart, it was like, oh, look, Antioch's nearby. So that's how I ended up here. Um, fast forward, that's kind of the backstory here. So how did I get from sustainable sourcing to employee engagement is probably what you're asking yourself. They don't really sound like they're similar at all. So when I was doing my research for this practicum project, um, what I found was in all of the research, it, there was always an allusion to the fact that you can have these models for sustainable sourcing, but if people aren't engaged in the sustainability aspect, there will be holes in them. There are so many links in the supply chain that it's nearly impossible to maintain any of these frameworks unless you have an engaged workforce. That's backwards. So I wanted to look at how do you create a culture of employee engagement? If you need an engaged workforce, how do you get there? It's one of those very qualitative things in a world of supply chain, which is very process driven and goal oriented. It's all about the metrics. I am a very process driven person, so I fit very well in that culture. What I wanted to do was use a qualitative medium for this project to kind of start fleshing out the, the cultural aspect of employee engagement. So I built a blog. And this was kind of my sandbox for creative thinking through this process. So what I want to walk you through is four tools that I came out with, of this process with that are like real tools that you can use in your work environment to help foster employee engagement. The first one is role playing. Role playing is really helpful because redundancy in some sort is really um, helpful in terms of business continuity. But there's a couple of other things that come out of this. Employees who learn what the others are going through on a day-to-day -day basis, and especially in the world of supply chain that is, tends to be very fast-paced and very demanding, tend to be more empathetic. They tend to communicate better with each other. They tend to be more cooperative, and production um, and productivity seems to increase. So by learning what the others are doing day-to-day, -day, these are some of the positive things that come out of that role-playing experience. Sorry, I keep doing that. 
The second tool is training. So I do actually want to read this because I know it's a little bit hard to see. The reality is that rather than being structured like a chain, most supply chains actually resemble living, complex organisms that are continually being disrupted by human behavior. Therefore, in order for a supply chain to perform at its best, all the people involved in it need to understand how external events and their individual roles contribute to the success of the whole. Educating and training people at all levels should be given the highest priority in order to gain value. So it's really difficult to have a workforce that is coming in every day and doesn't understand what their role is. So training is a good way to combat that. If you don't have employees who know what they're doing, they're going to become demotivated. Demotivated employees are not engaged employees. If they don't know what they're doing in their day-to-day -day job, they're less likely to be interested in something like sustainable sourcing, which is seen as kind of a peripheral um, function. The third tool is time. So a lot of the research that I, I went through indicated that giving employees some quiet time to work on something that they value is a really good way to encourage engagement. So there are pros and cons to this one, which is really interesting and I think very realistic. Um, if you give a couple of hours a day, say one to two for employees to work on projects that they're really interested in, they report improved focus, they, they appreciate the lack of interruption, they're more organized, and they experience better productivity and efficiency. However, this is one of those tools that if you roll out all at once, you can find that people who are used to multitasking actually experience some negative effects. Um, some people don't like the fact that they go for two hours without talking to anybody or answering emails. Um, they can feel like not being able to multitask impacts their concentration and they can become tired from the lack of breaks. So this is one of those tools that if you decide to use it, it needs to be rolled out kind of cautiously. And the final tool is trajectory. So similar to training, employees really want to understand what their career path is. If you don't understand where your role is in the organization, it can be really difficult to be engaged in something like sustainability. Um, everybody kind of, your world centers around you, right? So if you don't have a good sight line to what your career path is going to be in an organization, who cares whether your organization is doing sustainable sourcing? Unless you come in to an organization with that being a priority of yours, if you don't know what your, if you can move laterally or up or where you sit in that organization, where you fit, then it's going to be really difficult to be interested in other, um, what can be considered to some as peripheral aspects. So these are the four things that I really, I really drew out of this practicum research. Um, when you say cultural shift, right, everybody can see it. You know, usually when you look at an organization, you can say, ooh, they have some, they have some cultural issues that need to be addressed, but it's so difficult to really have concrete tools to be able to address those things. So these are the four or four of the things that I found during the course of my research that can really inspire that cultural shift. Give employees the opportunity to do some role playing. Give them some time during the day to, to work on things that they really value. Make training an absolute priority and provide visibility to available career paths. Thank you.